Good morning. This is Kettle Land on the Go. With all you need to know in news and weather as you start your Sunday. We also have your boredom busters coming up. But first, our top story. Police are investigating a shots fired call on the west side of Sioux Falls. It left an SUV with three bullet holes in the windshield, but no one was hurt. It happened at 4.30 this morning near a mobile home park south of 12th Street. Police say the owner of the SUV is being uncooperative, but officers did find one shell casing at the scene. Right now, police are calling it a reckless discharge of a firearm because they're not sure if the shooter had any intended target. So far, no one is in custody. We're hearing more from South Dakota lawmaker who discussed abortion rights with Vice President Kamala Harris last week. State Representative Erin Healy of Sioux Falls says she was picked for the meeting because of South Dakota's trigger ban that automatic, automatically makes abortions illegal in the state after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade just over two weeks ago. Vice President Harris really wanted to get this group together to just let us know that we're not in this fight alone and to give us the resources we need in our state to move forward when we do have those special sessions. The meeting also included representatives from Nebraska, Indiana, Florida, and Montana. Governor Kristi Noem went on national TV to express her support for the Supreme Court ruling, leaving abortion up to the states to decide. Unique about the United States of America, I love that about this country, mm -hmm. is that we have a very limited federal government. The Supreme Court did its job. It fixed yeah. a wrong decision it made many years ago and returned this power back to the state. Noam called for a special session of the legislature shortly after the Supreme Court ruling became public, but it's still unclear when that session will take place. Delegates to the South Dakota Democratic Party's convention over the weekend passed a resolution in support of a state constitutional amendment legalizing abortion, but the delegates failed to nominate a candidate for attorney general who could defend the issue in court if voters approve legalization in 2024. That means the Republican nominee, former Attorney General Marty Jackley, who opposes abortion rights, won't have a challenger as he seeks a return to the office. Let's take a look, first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. It is going to be a hot and humid day across Kelloland, especially to the south and east. We'll get to that in a moment, but for now, it's quiet as we look at Falls Park, 73 at the airport with a southeasterly breeze at 16 miles per hour. Uh, but we do have humidity already building. 70s East River, 80s down toward Winter and Valentine. Some 60s, though, up toward Buffalo and Bison. That's on the backside of a cold front that's going to continue to move on through. But ahead of that boundary, uh, dew points are in the 60s to around 70. Very, very uncomfortable already. And it's not going to get a whole lot better as we do have heat advisories in place for southeastern South Dakota, northern Nebraska, and northwestern Iowa through the evening with heat index values likely exceeding the century mark. So please plan accordingly if you are going to be outside today. We could also see a few thunderstorms at times. We'll break down those details and the rest of your seven-day forecast coming up. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Well, more families in Kelloland are in need of help putting food on the table due to inflation's grip on the country. The Faith Temple Church is answering that call with a weekly food giveaway. Volunteers distribute thousands of meals at the WH Lion Fairgrounds. We'll find out what kind of collaboration is involved in such a big undertaking and what organizers do to ensure each meal is a healthy solution to hunger in the community. Be sure to watch tonight's Eye on Kelloland at 10. The Brookings Summer Arts Festival wraps up today at Pioneer Park. The festival features more than 200 artists and crafters showcasing their works, along with dozens of food vendors, plus kids' activities and live music. The festival runs from 10 to 5. Admission is free. Springdale Lutheran Church, southeast of Sioux Falls, is hosting an old-fashioned ice cream social from 4 to 6 p.m. Barbecues, potato salad, and pie are also on the menu. The church is located on 480th Avenue, just west of Good Earth State Park. Larchwood Family Days wrap up with a community church service at the city park starting at 9.30. Rolls and coffee will be served afterward. Faith Temple Church in Sioux Falls presents the family quartet, the Cragans. The concert begins at 6.30. Good Earth State Park Summer Concert Series features a performance by Morgan's Heroes. The music begins at 4 o'clock. The concert is free to attend, but a park entrance license is required for vehicles. The Sioux Falls Municipal Band performs a free concert at Terrace Park. The band performance starts at 8 p.m. It's family fun day at the Canaries baseball game against Fargo-Moorhead. First pitch at Sioux Falls Stadium is at 105. Show up early before the game for a chance to play catch with the players and take time to run the bases after the game. Adam? 
Well, if you do decide to go and do that, you will want to make sure you have some water with you. It is going to be rather hot this afternoon in Sioux Falls. We do have a few isolated showers trying to make their presence known in a broken line from Fall River County through Pier up into Aberdeen. Uh, but you know, there's really not much of anything coming from that. Even a little isolated thunderstorm trying to pop up right along the Spink Brown County line. And again, not much of anything coming from that, but we'll still watch it. Considering we do have that marginal to slight risk for severe weather in place, uh, not just by day, especially up in northeastern Kelloland, but also later this evening and into the night for western and central portions of South Dakota. There's a zoomed out view. You can see the bulk of the activity is up toward North Dakota where they've had severe thunderstorm watches now extending into northwestern Minnesota. So again, we'll watch the southern edge of this line, see if we get some development toward Aberdeen, eventually into Sisseton. They do have a bit of a better opportunity to see something. You notice that slight risk level two out of five clipping Roberts County to the north and east. Just about everybody else though in green, that's a marginal risk, mainly for the overnight time frame. But we do have another a secondary area of slight risk or level two out toward the hills and the Rapid City area. Wind and hail are the main concerns, but an isolated tornado, of course, can never be completely ruled out. Here's future cast as we go through the night. We'll watch those showers and thunderstorms move south and east into the Sioux Falls area by daybreak. So we'll have a potentially soggy morning commute to kick things off for your day on Monday. Once we get to Monday afternoon, though, northwesterly flow takes over. High pressure builds in, and that's going to be just about it for a while. In fact, Tuesday and Wednesday, dare we say, are seasonable and comfortable days to get outside, but it does not last. That erodes away, and above average temperatures come creeping back in as a ridge aloft comes back, and really that's going to be the end of it for the rest of the week. We get back to square one in terms of 90s and even near 100 degree heat coming back into the picture. Highs today in the 90s to around 100. That's without the heat index in southeastern Kelloland. Again, you will want to keep that in mind. It is going to be rather hot today. Even up to the northeast, not as outright hot, but still humid all the same with highs in the low to mid 90s. Toward the North Dakota and Montana borders, we can see 80s for high temperatures, but the further south and east you go, we get back into the 90s to near 100. Overnight, we may also see some thunderstorms develop, so stay weather aware. Beyond that, we have lows in the 60s. Now, the the chance for thunderstorms by day is going to be conditional. I just want to throw that out there before we get to the seven day forecast. Uh, speaking of which, a few showers and thunderstorms in the first half of your day on Monday. Uh, the second half is dry. Then we stay completely dry through the rest of your work week, starting off seasonable, but then getting hot by the end of the week. We may have to introduce the chance for some thunderstorms again by next weekend. Have a great day, everybody. For more on your local news, weather, and sports, you can always head on over to kelloland.com.